Okay, in the 1970s when slide rules finally died and uh, the average person now bought themselves a calculator to do their calculations, uh, we really have the rise of two types of calculators. We have the four-function calculator and the more advanced scientific calculator. Uh, your first experience in school was probably to a four-function calculator, and now generations of students, uh, when they think calculator, they think of uh, this guy or something like it. Of course, now it's probably an app. Um, whereas in, before that, if you learned how to use a calculating device in school, it was probably a slide roll. You might have also learned how to use tables, um, but you have a slide roll here. Uh, this is a student mod model slide roll. It would be, you know, for a middle school student, this slide roll. Um, kind of the same audience as this 94 cent, um, if you can believe that, pocket calculator. Um, so let's see. One criticism of the, the pocket calculator is, you know, when you're, when you're in school and you're learning how to, say, measure things and do basic calculations, um, really the, the accuracy you have in your measurements is probably about three places. So it could potentially be more. Um, but, you know, if you're, if you're say, measuring... Uh, this guy's height to be four and a half feet, um, probably you're dealing with about a three significant figure uh, measurement, um, or you're measuring this building to be 23 feet. Uh, probably you don't have any more accuracy than that um, when you're just first approaching things in school. Um, so the accuracy of the slide roll, which is about three significant figures, is, is probably sufficient. Um, Furthermore, you, you probably have a better understanding of the effect of error from using the slide roll. You know, the calculator, it gives you kind of a false precision, right? Uh, you might do, let's say you're trying to do solve this proportion, uh, and you measure this person's shadow to be 4.5 feet, uh, and his height 6 feet. The height of this building uh, is the question here, so we set up a little proportion. Uh, then I need to solve that for h, do a little work, and then I'm going to punch that into the calculator. Um, 6. Uh, sorry, 6 times 23 divided by 4.5. You know, the student might think that these additional 6s actually have some meaning, right? Whereas, uh, probably only the first 3, maybe even 2 uh, numbers here really have some significance because of our actual measurements, right? Um, on the slide roll, this is, this is a fairly elegant calculation. I can literally set this proportion on the slide roll. I can set the 6 on the C scale over the 4.5 on the D scale. So here's the 4.5. Let's put the 6 over it. I can solve a proportion like this physically on the slide roll. Uh, now I'm going to find the 23, which is down here. Uh, now remember, the slide roll doesn't uh, put your decimal point for you, so it looks like 3.07 uh, or so there on the slide roll, 30.7. Um, so there's a little computation. So I think that the slide roll gives students maybe a, an increased appreciation for error um, and uh, the importance of, well, you know, how significant really is my um, measurement, right? What kind, of, what kind of detail do I really have in my measurement? Uh, that's kind of lost on the calculator. It's just all these cold, soulless numbers staring at you. You know, do I really need that seventh place there? Um, so, uh, it, can, it can deceive students a little bit, right? Um, now, another calculation, uh, so here's some interesting things, right? Uh, these last two calculations here, which I'll do on the slide roll, are calculations that the four-function calculator cannot do. So even this basic uh, middle schooler uh, slide roll here uh, can do these last two computations, whereas the four-function calculator cannot. So I think that the, the slide roll kind of demystifies the uh, transcendental functions a little bit, right? Um, all the transcendental functions, basically, that you need to compute um, until much later in school can be done on the basic slide roll. Um, so here you see I have one, two, three, four, five, six scales on the front, and then um, I have these three scales on the back, and with those I can I can compute trigonometry, I can compute exponential functions, um, I can really do pretty much anything you would need to do through high school. Um, okay, with the exception of addition and subtraction, right? Um, so let's see here. Let's say I want to do 2.4 to the 1.6, so the way you would do that on this slide roll, uh, you need to understand logarithms, and that's the trade-off for the slide roll, right? 
Uh, but without without the slide roll, there's less of a excuse to even talk about logarithms, right? So what I'm doing is setting the n here over the 2.4. I'm going to read the logarithm on the L scale uh, under that hairline. Looks like 0.38. Uh, so to compute this, I'm going to compute 0.38 times 1.6. I'll use the main scales for that. Uh, so let's see, there's 38 on the D scale. So times 1.6. I'll use CI. There's 1.6. Uh, so result there looks like uh, 0.608 or so. 608. So now I'll come back to the L scale and find that 608. Uh, so there's 6. 608 about there. Um, and result of my calculation is now here. It looks like 4.06. Um, so, you know, a more advanced slide rule would make that calculation easier, uh, but at least it's possible on this, right? Whereas it's not really possible on the four function calculator to do that calculation. Um, so, uh, even the most basic slide rule is, is capable of computing transcendental functions. Um, let's do this calculation. Uh, say I want to solve this triangle, maybe I'm trying to measure across a river here. So I've measured maybe this angle, and I've calculated this angle. Uh, this can be solved uh, with these scales on the reverse also. Let me flip the slide for this calculation. Um, so what I need to do is kind of set up a proportion. It, the proportion uses the law of sines. Uh, so 50 feet, I'll find that on the D scale, um, under the sine of 35, or sorry, sine of 55 degrees. So I need to find 55 degrees on S, align that. Then to find this, I'll find sine of 35 degrees by finding the 35 on S. Ah, and underneath that, coincidentally, I read it's about 35 feet on the D scale. Um, so I think that the, the basic slide roll, right, it kind of simplifies the idea of the transcendental function, right? They're, they're just as visual as the other calculations the slide roll can do, right? Um, so there, there's no real secret um, to sine and tangent and logarithms, exponential functions, um, in the sense that, you know, we don't learn an algorithm to compute them in school. So we don't learn an algorithm to compute sine of 35 degrees, right? And I think for a lot of students, that makes it kind of a black box when they go into their calculator, they push 35 to press sine, right? Um, but the slide rule makes it simple, right? It's just another scale, right? I can invert it by doing it backwards, just like I do on any of the other scales, right? Um, it, it makes it, it makes it, uh, less mysterious, right? It's just another scale, and, uh, it works like the other scales. Um, on, on the other hand, now that we have calculators, right, um, here is a scientific calculator. I think when students see, first see a scientific calculator, it's kind of overwhelming, right? Uh, will I ever be able to understand all those functions and what they do, right? Whereas understanding the small number of scales on this slide roll is maybe uh, something that you believe you could do, right? Um, so I think just the appearance of something like this makes makes the math seem more complicated, right? Um, whereas the elegance of this, I think, um, I don't know, I really wish it had been the way that I had learned. Um, so tell me what you think. Tell me if you think schools uh, should go back to issuing their slide rolls uh, or we should stick with something like this kill calculators altogether. Tell me your opinion um, and have a great day.